Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, sitting on the floor, you probably wouldn't know that if I didn't tell that to you, but my piano's up here and I'm down here. All right, so I wanted to talk a little bit today about, I guess, some just life stuff, some things, you know, I've kind of maybe starting to realize about myself or just starting to realize about things in general um, in terms of imposter syndrome and, and fitting into you know, where you think you should belong or something like that. But, you know, I didn't really script anything. I didn't really, you know, type anything out, but I just wanted to kind of <clears throat> see if I could kind of get there on my own. So um, if you don't know, uh, I work, well, I have a day job. I work as a production manager at, uh, at a metal uh, shop, like doing assembly work and things like that. But I also work as a professional singer. Um, and a voice teacher. And for a long time, and I actually did some work in New York City before I moved back, uh, moved back to my hometown. So, uh, <clears throat> I guess I, I wanted to talk about imposter syndrome because I think it's something that a lot of people struggle with. And, um, yeah, I, I find it, I find it to be very interesting. And, and I guess I'll just speak from my personal experience and I don't want to talk in too many generalities so I'll just talk where I come from you know where I'll walk into a lesson I'll walk into um, a voice lesson or that's why I just said a lesson but or, or a rehearsal or a performance or something like that um, and I'll just have this I don't know like this uh, this I don't want to call it like a feeling of dread or something like that but it's just like this feeling of of unease, like I don't know what I'm doing, um, which, you know, I in my head I'm saying to myself, you know, maybe that's a little bit true. Maybe maybe there's uh, a little part of me in the back of my head, little voice that says, you know, you're not you're not there yet. You haven't learned enough. But if it's really hard to look back on a body of work, um, and and you know, kind of accept that you have the experience that you that you need to walk in a situ situation and feel confident. Um, but yeah, I've been working on voice since, um, I mean, shit, since I, let's just call it middle school. It's probably earlier, but let's just call it middle school. Okay, so I'm 30 now. What, you're in middle school when you're like 11, 12-ish, somewhere around there. Um, yeah, so I've been working on voice for a, almost almost 20 years. Maybe even more if you consider younger life, but I don't know if I do. Um, but where I started getting vocal direction was... Sorry, just getting comfortable. Um, where I started learning the voice and music was around that age. It was with, like, you know, directors and teachers and things like that. Um, and I've had... Pretty much every teacher you could have in the book. I've had nice teachers. I've had, you know, uh, not nice teachers. I've had teachers who are very motivational, teachers that expect a lot from you. I've I've had a lot of people like that in my life, and I and I've always seemed to gravitate towards those negative voices. Right? I have I respond well to negative reinforcement. Um, obviously, I think everybody to a certain extent reacts well to positive reinforcement, or, or maybe it's just good for yourself. I don't know. I, I've never found when I, when I got that, oh, good job, you're doing so great. I never, I never felt when I heard that I need to now work harder. When I hear something like that, it makes me feel like I'm done or, or, um, or I've reached that pinnacle. So, so for me, the positive doesn't really do much, um, you know, and for, for my betterment, I think it does a lot. It makes me feel good. Like I, I could touch my head to the pillow and fall asleep at night. But in terms of me getting better, it doesn't really do that for me. Um, sorry if some things feel like a little word vomit. I'm, like I said, I'm coming up with this off the off the top of my head. But I think this is a really important thing to talk about. Um, and, and maybe it's important for you to hear. Um, but for me, it's important to talk about because I don't talk about these things out loud. I don't really, I really don't. And I have found this channel to be something I could just sort of be myself on and, um, 
and yeah, I mean, it, so besides all that, so I've had good teachers, I've had bad teachers, I've had positive reinforcement, I've had negative reinforcement, I've always worked better with negative reinforcement, and I've always found that I've worked harder or maybe I don't, I don't want to say more efficiently, but I always felt like I worked more, maybe, maybe I do mean that, I, I felt like I was more productive when I was mad about something, when I felt like I didn't do as well as I thought I should do, or I felt like I was letting somebody else down, and that pushed me to work harder. Now, why does all of this matter when I talk about imposter syndrome and, and things like that? I think it has, I think negative reinforcement to a certain extent has made me who I am today, which I'm very proud of the body work, uh, the body of work that, I, that I've that i made in music um, and where I am as a singer. Um, but I think that negative reinforcement also, you know, gave me that that idea of like, I'm not there yet. You know, I'll, I'll never be there, right? And I... And actually, I, I say this to my students. I'm not I'm not a mean teacher by any by any uh, stretch of the imagination. I'm honest. Like I'm I'm gonna give you the you know the full tea as they say, but um, but I'm not a mean person. I don't think. Um, but I think that negative reinforcement, while it helped me get to where I am, it also gave me that little voice in the back of my head that make maybe makes me feel like I'm not good enough. Now I'm sure that's comes from other things as well. You know, you grow up in different situations, you know, you have friends who, you know, you, lots of things can contribute to the same symptom. Does that make sense? Um, but, you know, I'm just trying to keep it within the world of, of my music and everything like that. But, so, I think that is where my, where my imposter syndrome uh, comes in. And I've also always had a hard time in my head at least I, from what other people tell me I, I I do this well but I I don't always feel like I do I, I sometimes feel like I well not sometimes a lot of the time I feel like I don't fit in in groups where I feel like I should now like I'll walk into a rehearsal or something like that and I and you know I have that like hard time connecting with people you know what I mean like I could joke around and be buddy buddy like whatever but in my head like that conversation is in one ear and out the other you know what I mean it's not I, I just don't make connections like that in a working or like rehearsal sort of scenario which is you know I, I think that I think that could be good and bad. So, right, you don't need to get along with everybody. Well, it's not that I don't get along. You don't need to fit in with everybody to be successful at what you do. But you do need to, you know, form those relationships to get work and everything like that. And I've been lucky enough to, you know, even though I'm not the best at it, I've been lucky enough to make a good enough name for myself that I, that I you know, get work on a consistent enough basis. Um, and like I said, that's not what I do for a living. I don't do music for a living, which is great now because there was a time where I was like, oh, if I'm not doing this, I like, you know, I don't feel like I'm surviving or I, you know, and back in New York City, I had like a survival job. I worked at Lowe's, you know. Um, but now I have a very good job that I like going to, you know, of course it's stressful, you know, like any other job. Um, but I have something that can support me while I go out and do the things I like to do in my free time. And I don't have to take any job that comes around, right? So I think that freedom also, well, not to use the same word twice, but gave me more freedom to, you know, connect with people on a, on a deeper level, um, which maybe is helping me get more work in my hometown. But um, I know I'm all over the place, but uh, um, I guess this has kind of turned into a sort of journal entry. But I also wanted to know if, if anybody's here at 9 minutes and 50 seconds, have you ever dealt with this kind of, you know, issue? Have you ever dealt with it? And do you think it's an issue? 
that's one thing I don't know if I actually believe. I don't, sometimes I think that my, you know, I don't want to say antisocially because I'm not antisocially. You walk into a, you know, a rehearsal, I'm very friendly with people, blah, blah, blah. But my, but my relationship creation is very surface level. In a lot of, um, you know, performance scenarios, uh, rehearsal scenarios, um, is that a bad thing completely? I don't think so personally. For me, I, I enjoy the work itself. I don't need the people end of it. I personally don't need that. But for like, let's say I'm doing a show or something where it's like an ensemble and there's many people and there's kind of like a team, right? You need to know how to function as a teammate, as a coworker, you know? And I feel like I do that well enough, like I said, on a surface level. Am I gonna, after the show is over, am I gonna go out with a beer or go out for a beer with, with some people from the cast? Probably not. You know what I mean? The, the, the work is done. But, but yeah, you know, from having that sort of, you know, antisocial, you know, sort of mindset and also, you know, having some, well, I think that also contributes to, sorry, dog's going crazy. I think that and, you know, some negative reinforcement from, from growing up has kind of nurtured this thought in the back of the head back of my head that I'm not good enough, which I'm just going to be honest with you. It's not true, right? I'm very, you know, I don't like saying it. I don't like sounding cocky, but I'm very good at what I do. And, and what I do is, um, sing and I, and I feel like I sing very well. Um, but that being said, there's always that thought in the back of your head. And I think sometimes that could be I think a lot of the time that could be a hindrance to you, but a little bit of it could be a driving factor to get better, right? Um, you don't have to believe the little voice in your head, but if you're feeling at all that, you know, you maybe you're behind or, or you could be doing better, let that little voice drive you. Don't let it, you know, make you afraid of, of like going out there and, and giving it your all and being the best version of yourself it's important. So I think that's what I have to say about that. Um, it's probably all over the place. I think I got to a point uh, right there in that last sentence, if you uh, made it here 13 minutes in. But yeah, um, I do want to do some more videos like this. I want to talk more about, um, you know, my performance life and, and things like that. And just more like life stuff for me. Um, and also, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, working on Marriage of Figaro right now, so I might even, you know, do some recordings of my rehearsal process if anybody is watching this channel and somehow found a magic channel that also talks about music and you're trying to get into music. Maybe it could be interesting to you. Um, but yeah, so that's, I guess, that's what I have to say. I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that. I hope you have a great day.